Hi everyone, it's Bethany and I'm working on creating some stencils with the Cricut Joy and I thought I would take you along with me so you can see how I'm going to approach it. So what I'm going to do is I got these little tiny house cutouts. I think they're from Michael's and I don't want to quote myself so please don't quote me but I think they're about a dollar. I, I, I remember them being really really cheap and I think they're even like in the little checkout stand, you know those little gotcha stands. I always call them the gotcha stands because they're you're, you're in the line, they've got you there and then there's all this cute stuff that it's pretty affordable so you end up grabbing some while you're waiting so anyway I think they're around a dollar um, but I'll try to find a link and put them down in the description box below but they're just little wood cut cutouts and I got a few of them because I was inspired by them and thought they would make some really cute gifts but they come in a um, unfinished wood and so I painted this white with my chalk paint and I'll link that down below and then I'm going to do a little stencil on the top of this and I thought of a cute little design that I thought you guys would like as well and we're just gonna um, um, play around with it and see how it turns out. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this as my base. I'm going to have a measuring tape to measure out my design, a weeding tool, and then a brayer tool may come in handy, and then a little scraper tool as well. I'm also going to be using two different colors of paint. So I have this Americana chalky finish. Um, let me see what color this is. Oh goodness. Uh, I think it's refreshing. It might be a refreshing. And then the other one I'm using is this folk art home decor chalk paint. This one is called, oh goodness, what's this one? I think this is vintage Victorian. Okay, and then I'm also using just two little foam brushes. I got these on Amazon, I believe, and I got like 900 in a pack. Well, not really 900, but you know what I mean. They come in with a lot of them in there, but I'll try to link those down below as well. And then I'm also going to be using the Cricut stencil. Now, I've always used a different brand of stencil, um, and I'll share another uh, video up in the corner right here where I did um, a stencil with some Aura Mask, I believe it's called, um, but you'll have to check out that video to see what brand the other one was. But I, um, I'm going to try this Cricut stencil because I believe I got this in either a bundle or something like that and I have a couple rolls of it from a bundle so I'm going to try it out. I'm also going to use the Cricut Joy so I'm going to use the Cricut Joy mat because the material I'm using is not smart material so this will allow us to feed through non-smart materials through our machine to get it cut. Okay let's go ahead and pop into Cricut Design Space. Always be sure to check out the description box below just in case I missed anything or if I sneak anything onto the table um, and you want to take a closer look at any of the materials. All right, let's get started. Oh, I almost forgot. I want to measure this really quick. So I'm just going to measure the square base of it. So I'm going to kind of pretend that the little roof line is not there. So it looks like it is three and a half by just about three and a quarter. So I'm going to say three and a half by three and a half just to make it easy on us. All right, let's get into design space. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my stencil base. So I'm going to come over here to the shapes box, and I'm going to grab a square, and it was about three and a half by three and a half, or that's the measurements I'm going to use, so three and a half by three and a half. I'm going to make this a lot bigger just so we can really see it. And we'll keep our stencil this nice gray color. You can use any color you want. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to create the little design that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a variety of text, which is the text box here, and images. So first I'm going to go to images and I am going to search for a heart. So I'm going to type in heart and I'm going to browse through. There are only 900, so you'll have to just be patient with yourself. Everyone likes something a little bit different. I think this is the one I'm going to use, though. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and select Insert Images. So I'm just going to drag this over to the side, size it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my text box here, and I am going to use the font Kate's ABCs. It's my favorite font. I use it for just about everything. If you've been around my channel for long enough, you know that already. And then I am going to say HME. Now this is a double layer font. You can see over in the layers panel here, and I'm actually only using a single layer. So I am going to take the second layer and just delete it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to ungroup so I can move my letters around. So ungrouping allows you to now have them each in a layer of their own. And you can see that over here, they all have their own layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell out home, but I'm going to kind of spell it in a square using the little heart as the O. And I thought this would be really cute. You could also use it as a wreath um, for the O. I thought that would be cute as well. One thing I recommend, though, is keeping your de design fairly simple if you're doing a smaller type stencil. So I thought this would be easier than a wreath because it just has a little bit easier pieces to go along with it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of size these 
the same here and I can always play around with it. I'm going to size this kind of or place this up a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to come up to a line and I'm going to say center horizontally and it's just going to center those together here. Okay so I have those ready and what I'm going to do is just grab my little E here and I'm going to grab now the M and the E. Let's see I'm going to scoot that this way a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna grab the M and the E, and then I'm gonna say align, align bottom. Okay, and everything's just gonna kind of shift where it needs to go there, but they're now centered together. Okay, and so then I'm just gonna manually kind of center this little heart. And I think I like how that looks. That looks really nice to my eye. Okay, so now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and I am going to weld them all together. So now they're all one piece. You can see that over here, they went from multiple layers. I'll go ahead and click back so you can see that again. Right now we have a layer for the heart, for the H, the M, and the E. When I select them all and weld them together, it makes it one layer. So this is all one piece again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place this on my stencil here, and I'm going to size it up a little bit. And I'm gonna do, now the reason I want my stencil to be pretty much the exact same um, size as my base is because it gives me a little room because I'm gonna actually be painting these letters on. So I'm going to be placing paint wherever this beige color is. So I just want to give myself a little room around there just in case I get paint anywhere. It gives me a little bit of a buffer. Plus it's going to help me to center my stencil on my design. But you can make your stencil um, however you'd like it. So I'm just going to kind of center that and see where I want. I think that's going to look about right. I might size it up just a hair. Let's see. That might look really good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to select both of them and I wanna make sure my uh, stencil is centered. So I'm just going to go ahead and center everything. It looks like I was really close because it like did not even move at all. Okay, now what I'm going to do is select everything and I'm actually creating the stencil at this point. So how I'm gonna create the stencil is we have two layers. We have this layer here. We have the stencil layer or the square. We're gonna select both of them, come over here and click slice. And now we have sliced out our little design out of the stencil and now we're left with a final stencil to work with. So now these can be deleted. We can go ahead and X and now this is our stencil that we'll work with. So again it's at three and a half by three and a half. It looks like it's three and a half or 3.514 but that's just fine. And now we will go ahead and select make it making sure we have our joy selected. We'll go ahead and select make it. Okay, we're going to say on the mat because we are using any material. Again, we're not using smart materials for this project. And now we'll click continue. It's going to locate our joy and we can go ahead and select our material. So I'm going to go ahead and browse material and I'm going to just write stencil right up here and I'm going to select stencil vinyl. Then I'm going to click done and we can go ahead and load our machine with the material and get going. Okay, so what I have is my little paper trimmer here and I'm just gonna place my stencil right in there and place it this way so I can use my measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and place that in and then I will just make it three and a half. Okay, by three and a half. That way it's the exact size that I need. And I went a little tad bigger just to give myself a little bit of buffer. Okay. And then you'll see that that is going to be the size of our little house right here. Okay, so now what we can do is put our scraps to the side. We can grab our mat here. And you can you'll also use the smaller green mat if you'd like as well. Um, I just need to clean my other one. So this one is has a little bit more stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and place my stencil material. This is stencil vinyl. I'm going to place that right on here. Now, if you don't have stencil vinyl, you can also use... Um, removable vinyl. That works as well. I have not done it before, but I've heard that that acts as a good stencil as well. So if you don't want to invest in stencil vinyl or you don't have any on hand, removable vinyl will work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place this into my machine and then I'll click go on my device and it will get cut out. Okay, I had to recut my stencil real quick because I got my measurements wrong for some reason. I must have been too much in a rush. So now I'm going to load that and get it cut out. 
Okay, so another thing that I also forgot to mention is I'm going to be using this paper transfer tape. It's a masking paper transfer tape. I love it. Um, and I am going to use this because it is a little bit more mild in stickiness. So I think I want something a little bit gentler for my stencil. So that's why I grabbed this as my transfer tape for this project. Okay, so this is just about done. I'm going to go ahead and unload it and it looks great. So what I'm going to do is I'll zoom in and we will go ahead and weed this together and then start placing it and painting it. Okay, so for weeding a stencil, remember you are going to do this a little differently than you would weed a design because you're going to leave um, the background and you're going to take away the letters. So remember, you're going to remove anything that you're going to place paint on. So I am actually going to remove the letters and the heart, leaving the background in place. So here's my first letter. And you can weed this just like you would regular vinyl or iron on with your weeding tool. And I'm just being careful that you want to leave the pieces that need to stay right on the vinyl. So I have our heart and then our E, just like this. And the little M is our final piece. Okay, so this is now our little stencil and that we did really, really nice. Again, I used the stencil vinyl setting in design space and I used default pressure for mine. Okay, so now I'm going to take my transfer tape here and I'm going to grab my scissors and just cut a little piece that I need here. Perfect, I can cut this down even more and save the rest, okay. So I'm going to place this right over my stencil. Now this part is what's going to take the stencil off of the carrier sheet that it was cut on. So I'm going to grab my scraper tool and really press down, allowing the stencil to come into contact with the transfer tape, that way those two meet together. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the back just like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little corner here. So with it still upside down, I'm going to just gently remove that white carrier sheet from the back. And then this can be thrown away. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to size just because I think that's going to help me with centering my stencil on my little house here. So I'm just cutting the extra transfer tape off, at least on one side. I think I'll just do it right there. That way I have an area that I can um, easily take up on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my little piece here. Now what I did with this is I painted it with chalk paint and then I believe, I yes, I can tell, um, I did some distressing on it. So I used my sander, my husband's electric sander, and just distressed it. It also smooths out the paint strokes um, that can happen when you're painting. And so I'm just gonna line this up right on my base here. That's why I also wanted my stencil to be the same size as my little base here because it just helps everything get lined up and centered. That looks pretty good, but I actually, well, nope, that looks good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take my scraper, press it down, okay. And then once it's pressed down really well, I'm going to take that little corner that I allowed to have a little bit left on and I am going to peel away the transfer tape, leaving my stencil on my wood, just like that. Okay, now I wanna make sure that everything is down really, really well. So I'm gonna take my brayer tool and just really make sure everything is down really firm, especially on the, the little edges because I wanna make sure that any paint does not get under there. And I think we are all ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my paint. So my plan is to do the letters in this nice, refreshing green mint color. And then I'll do my pink in, or my heart in my pink. So I'm gonna open this one up. Oh my goodness, that took more muscle than I have to open that up. Does anybody else struggle with opening paint sometimes? Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's a really pretty color, isn't it? I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit from the top here and I'm just gonna do really um, light little strokes on here. Okay, there we go.
Okay, and again, now that my stencil covers my whole base, um, I don't have to be overly careful with where I'm painting because I know it's not going to get on an area that it doesn't need to be. Again, just being careful that it doesn't get on my little heart. Okay, so what I'm going to do with my heart here, I'm just going to take a little bit. Let me shake this just a little bit. Okay. Whoop. It's coming out a little bit there. I can just grab a little bit from the top here and paint my little heart. So I do want to go a little fast with this because I do want to peel my stencil when it's wet. That way it just has some really nice clean lines. So that is the first layer and then I'm going to go ahead and do one more layer with each color. I think that'll be just about right. And I like a little bit of a imperfect distressed look on my artwork. Um, I do, I like my stuff to be a little bit more farmhouse and imperfect. So I think two or, um, you know, the less is better. Um, and I like to see a little bit of paint stroke. Um, that's just me though. That's my personal preference. So you can add as much or as little paint as you want. If you need yours to be completely perfect, then you can keep adding layers if you'd like. Um, it's all personal preference at this point. So do how you would like to do it. I like to see a little bit of homey look, I guess you could say in mine. Okay. So I think I might add just one more to mine. This is definitely a, a, wadi, a watery um, paint, a little bit more watery than, if that's even a word, a little bit more runny. That's what I'll say. It's a little bit more runny than the other paint. The other one's a little thicker. Okay. Looks really good. Okay, so I put two coats on each and they look pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to peel my stencil. So let me actually clean everything up a little bit. That way I don't get paint everywhere. And then we'll get to peeling. Okay, so I'm keeping my weeding tool handy so that I can get the little middle. But what I'm going to do is, again, it's still wet. I'm going to take my stencil and I'm just going to peel very carefully like that and this part might get a little bit messy because um, oops it has that little round or that little border area this part might get a little messy because I um, have wet paint on it so just keep that in mind you don't want to you don't want to get paint everywhere be careful where your stencil lays back down and be careful if you get paint on your hands not to you know, retouch your project. That is super cute. Okay, that's coming off really nice. So I'm going to take this and put it on some leftover transfer tape and just keep all of that contained because it's a little messy. And I'm making sure, again, actually wet wipes would be helpful with this part too because then you won't have a mess on your hands and if you do you can just quickly get it off okay so now I'm gonna take my weeding tool being careful not to you know puncture my wood or scratch it I'm just going to grab little pieces and get those final little pieces pulled up so I'm just grabbing a little piece to pull up making sure I don't get paint on my weeding tool that will get on my project so pulling up a little piece just to grab and removing. So, so far I actually prefer this um, folk art chalk paint over the other one. It's a little bit more um, thick, so it's kind of just doing it a little bit cleaner. Um, if you guys have paint that you love to use for stencils, let me know. I don't do a ton of stenciling, but when I do, I really like the look of it. So I always am encouraged once I've done a project with stenciling to do another one because it always turns out really nice. Okay, and then I'm just going to grab this final little heart right here. And that is the little final result. How cute is that? I love it. I do prefer this over 
over this brand um, just because this is a little bit more watery but I liked the color so I grabbed it um, but you can again choose any paint that you like that you think will look best but this I think was a little bit thicker and it just applied a little bit nicer where this was just a little um, more runny so it's kind of hard to contain it a little bit more but I think it turned out really cute and it was a really easy way to use your stencil with a Cricut Joy so I hope you enjoyed this please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and be sure that you're all subscribed because we will have more tutorials coming up soon and I can't wait to see you in the next video.